Picture this. It's a lazy Saturday morning, and the sun filters gently through your bedroom curtains. You're nestled in your favorite spot on the couch, clad in your comfiest PJs, clutching a bowl of sugary cereal like it's the Holy Grail. The year is 1977, and you're about to embark on an adventure that will leave an indelible mark on your childhood. Your very first encounter with the amazing Spider-Man. The television screen crackles to life, and there he is, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, swinging through the bustling streets of New York City with a grace that defies gravity. You can practically feel the wind in your hair as he soars between skyscrapers, a crimson and blue blur against the city skyline. The theme music, oh, that iconic theme music, resonates in your ears, igniting a sense of anticipation that's nothing short of magical. As the episodes unfold, you're captivated not only by the web-slinging action, but also by the character of Peter Parker. His struggles with ordinary life, trying to balance school, work, and his responsibilities as Spider-Man strike a chord with you. You can't help but cheer him on as he faces off against the likes of the Green Goblin and Dr. Octopus, all while maintaining his secret identity. And then, there are those memorable moments that etch themselves into your memory. Perhaps it's the first time Spider-Man climbs up a wall with those iconic suction cups, or the heart-pounding confrontations on rooftops high above the city. Maybe it's the quirky charm of J. Jonah Jameson and his relentless pursuit of Spider-Man's true identity that keeps you glued to the screen. Now, as we take a nostalgic journey back to the late 70 seconds, let's uncover some intriguing random facts about this beloved TV series. These tidbits will not only rekindle your fond memories, but also shed new light on the web slinger's early small screen adventures. Did you know that Stan Lee himself made cameo appearances in several episodes, solidifying his connection with the character he co-created? Or how about the fact that the web-swinging sequences were accomplished with a clever mix of live-action stunts and animation, a groundbreaking technique for its time? And here's a gem, Nicholas Hammond, who played Peter Parker, Spider-Man, had to wear a mechanical rig to achieve those gravity-defying climbs, adding an extra layer of heroics to his performance. So, dear reader, whether you're revisiting the world of the amazing Spider-Man or discovering it for the first time, Join us on this journey of nostalgia and trivia, where we unravel the hidden threads of this iconic series, one fact at a time. In 1977, The Amazing Spider-Man swung onto television screens, marking a significant moment in the Web Slinger's live-action history. While it wasn't Spider-Man's first appearance in a live-action setting, it was the first time viewers heard the iconic character's voice and saw Peter Parker come to life. Before the likes of Nicholas Hammond, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, or Tom Holland donned the Spidey suit, it was Danny Seagrin who first brought Spider-Man to life on the Electric Company from 1974 to 1977. However, it wasn't until the Amazing Spider-Man series that Spider-Man was fully realized as a speaking, breathing character, making it a landmark moment for fans. But there was a unique twist to this series. In an effort to keep costs down and maintain a sense of realism, the show's producers opted to pit Spider-Man against real-life criminals instead of the colorful supervillains from the comics. This decision, for better or worse, diverted from the traditional Spider-Man narrative, where foes like the Chameleon, Craven the Hunter, Mysterio, the Enforcers, and Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin are central. Some fans saw this as a missed opportunity to bring these iconic characters to life inexpensively. In essence, the Amazing Spider-Man series of 1977 holds a special place in Spider-Man's history. It was the first to give the character a real voice and brought Peter Parker into the live-action realm, albeit with a unique twist on the villainous front. In the 1977 TV series The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man's Spider-Sense power, which gives him a psychic warning of danger, is portrayed as full clairvoyance. Unlike in the comics, where the Spider-Sense is just a tingling feeling that varies with the threat's seriousness, this show took a different approach. Contrary to what some might think, Spider-Man wasn't cancelled due to low ratings. It actually did well in the ratings. However, it's believed that TV politics played a role in its cancellation. CBS executives wanted to change their image as the superhero network, so they canceled both Spider-Man and Wonder Woman. 
The series first premiered as a feature film on CBS in the United States. This was unique because it marked the first time a Spider-Man production had a theatrical release. But interestingly, the theatrical screenings were exclusive to Europe. So, in the world of the Amazing Spider-Man TV series, Spider-Sense was more like clairvoyance, and the show's cancellation had more to do with network politics than poor ratings. Plus, it made history with its theatrical release in Europe. That's the scoop on this classic TV series from 1977. In 1977, The Amazing Spider-Man swanned onto television screens, bringing the iconic web slinger to life. While the show focused on Peter Parker's adventures as Spider-Man, it had a few interesting character adaptations from the comic book series. Aside from Peter, Spider-Man, the gruff J. Jonah Jameson was the only character from the comics to regularly appear on the show. Aunt May and Joe Robbie Robertson made appearances in the pilot episode, with Aunt May appearing in one regular episode, portrayed by a different actress. Additionally, Rita seemed to be inspired by Glory Grant from the Spider-Man comics, and Captain Barbara appeared to be based on Captain Stacy. Nicholas Hammond, who played Peter Parker, Spider-Man, had plans to reprise his role in a TV movie teaming up Spider-Man with the Incredible Hulk. The film was set to be distributed by Universal Pictures and Columbia Pictures for a spring 1984 air date, with Hammond also serving as a co-writer alongside Ron Satloff and Stan Lee. Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno were also slated to reprise their roles. Unfortunately, the project was cancelled before filming began due to budget constraints, despite efforts to bring together crew members from both series and create the iconic black costume from the comics for Hammond's Spider-Man. One unique aspect of the Amazing Spider-Man series was its portrayal of spider tracers, small electronic tracking devices resembling spiders. These gadgets, independently made by Peter Parker, made their debut in the show. While spider tracers also made an appearance in Spider-Man Homecoming, they were provided by Tony Stark, deviating from the comics in the original series where Peter designed them himself. In the world of live-action Spider-Man adaptations, The Amazing Spider-Man holds the distinction of being the only series to feature spider tracers in their true comic book form, adding to its unique place in the Spider-Man television legacy. And there you have it, a glimpse into the notable aspects of the 1977 TV series The Amazing Spider-Man, where familiar characters were brought to life, exciting crossovers were planned but never realized, and one-of-a-kind gadgets took center stage. In the early 1970s, literary agent David Ops suggested to Stan Lee and Carmine Infantino, the then editors of Marvel and DC Comics, respectively, that they create a Superman vs. Spider-Man film. Lee and Infantino liked the idea, but since the Superman film and the Amazing Spider-Man TV series were already planned, they decided to instead make the idea as a comic book. This eventually led to the creation of the iconic 1976 comic book crossover titled Superman vs. The Amazing Spider-Man, The Battle of the Century. The comic brought together two of the most iconic superheroes from rival comic book publishers, DC and Marvel, in an epic showdown that delighted fans of both universes. It was a historic moment in comic book history, showcasing the potential for cross-company collaborations and paving the way for future crossovers between superheroes from different publishers. As we bid adieu to the web-slinging adventures of The Amazing Spider-Man from 1977, we hope you've swung through this nostalgic journey with the same enthusiasm that Peter Parker exhibited every time he donned his iconic red and blue suit. This iconic series wasn't just about a hero in tights, it was about the human spirit, resilience, and the eternal struggle to do what's right. The Amazing Spider-Man invited us to soar through the skyscrapers of New York City and swing into the heart of its crime-ridden alleyways. It showed us that even in the face of adversity, one can rise above, and that true power is not in physical strength, but in the strength of character. Perhaps you recall the thrill of seeing Spidey in action for the first time, or maybe it was the moral lessons imparted by Uncle Ben's timeless wisdom. Were you a fan of the web shooters and acrobatics, or did the romantic subplot with Mary Jane Watson tug at your heartstrings? Whatever it was that left an indelible mark on your memory, we'd love to hear about it. Now is your chance to share your treasured memories, thoughts, and emotions tied to the amazing Spider-Man of 1977. 
Let's celebrate this iconic series that spun its way into our hearts, leaving us with lasting impressions. Thank you for taking this trip down memory lane with us. Your passion and connection to this beloved series make it all the more remarkable. Stay tuned for more adventures, and remember, with great power comes great responsibility.